For most Chinese born to poor farming families, the odds of getting a college education are just about zero. Unless something is done, they'll miss out on all the benefits of China's advancing economy. But in this report from Guizhou province, we see that something is being done for some young Chinese. NHK Wells' Ken Kamoto has the story. 18-year-old Sun Susu is the eldest daughter in a farming family. They live in a mountain village in Guizhou province. When she was a small child, Susu's father lost his eyesight. Her elder brother left home to work in the city after graduating from junior high. Between helping with the family and household chores, Susu managed to finish senior high. About two years ago, her mother became ill and died. Since then, the family has found it harder to make ends meet. Susu wanted to study at university to become a doctor. She passed the entrance exam for the university she most wanted to attend. But Susu wasn't able to pursue her studies. My family would have had to borrow money for my tuition. I didn't want them to do that. I blame myself for not making it possible for my daughter's study at university. More than 5 million residents of Kuizhou province live in poverty. The region has the lowest per capita GDP in all of China. Last year, a private college opened in a mountain community. It lies about 50 kilometers south of Kuiyang, the province's central city. 200 students from all over Kuizhou are enrolled in the college's three-year program. Many of these students are having trouble with the cost of living. They can't afford three meals a day. But why can't they study at college? That's because they have free tuition. Sun Wei founded the college. He has been involved in teaching IT for over 30 years. An IT business group in Taiwan funds the college. It screened applicants on the basis of their academic records. It also considered the family's financial status. Susu met the criteria and was admitted. Last year, nearly 90% of the students, including Susu, did not have to pay tuition. She lives in a dormitory, and the college pays part of her living expenses. We must help these people free themselves from poverty. Providing a good education and job opportunities is an effective way of doing that. You want to read? Okay, Diana, number two. Rule number two. The college puts a high priority on teaching English. About 30 volunteers who support Sun Wei's aims have come from countries like the U.S. and Britain to teach English. It's true they don't have a lot of money, but these students are very rich in their hearts and in their minds. They, they have a desire to really do more and to really try to be more. ID firms also play a hand in helping the students get ahead. Before now, the students had never had access to IT. Now, they each have a laptop computer leased by the college. Susu is studying hotel management. The college is tying up with major hotels and IT firms ready to employ graduates. That's a good incentive for Susu to achieve her goals. I'm really happy getting higher education on such a beautiful campus. It's like I'm dreaming. I'm determined to study even harder to please my blind father. Our students have good characters and work hard. 
They are controlling their destiny. They can turn things around. I hope they'll be able to use what they learn here to land jobs and become respected members of society. Sunwei's college ensures that students in this out-of-the-way part of China won't be left out of the country's expanding economy. Right, and our reporter Kingo Kamoto joins us from Beijing. Kingo, what kind of education does the college focus on? Well, Yuko, uh, the college specializes in vocational training. In doing so, the institution ignores those critics who say colleges and universities should provide a scholastic education. Sun Wei insists that the biggest priority is helping graduates become employed so they can escape poverty. He puts great value in teaching students to behave well and gain society's respect. For example, the curriculum includes an activity that the college calls labor. Four times a week, the students must do chores like cleaning. This is to teach them that they can't make any gains without labor. The college is one of the, one of the few in China to include manual labor in its program. The college plans to accept 1,000 students this year, a five-fold five increase from last year. Sun Wei and his colleagues will keep educating young Chinese. They don't want young people to be denied a college education because they are poor. Yuko? Thanks very much there, Kengo. That was NHK.